So in 2025, most of us have played with AI and many have worked with AI, but what we're really interested in is how businesses are actually integrating AI operationally. So we recently did a super deep dive on this. In January, we surveyed over a thousand managers and senior business leaders to kind of learn about where they are in the process of AI adoption and really the impact that it's having on their operations. Now, there's a full report on our site that you can dive into where you can also learn about the report in general and many other things. But since this is such a meaty piece, I wanted to talk you through it a little bit to give you a sense of the landscape, where different people lie on the adoption curve and just highlight some things that I find really interesting. Now, whether you're a business or whether you're building software for business, and indeed, whether you're using AI or you're not, there's going to be something for you here. So let's dive in. So I'm going to talk about the hype cycle, the key takeaways, the issues in adoption in organizations, and how businesses are actually implementing AI. So finally, in 2025, we are starting to see businesses adopt a more pragmatic or mature perspective on AI. While my feed, I don't know about you, is still saturated with posts about AI taking over everyone's jobs or revolutionizing society, thankfully, the conversation is shifting towards more tangible and useful things. And one nice way to look at this is Gartner's hype cycle, which you may be aware of. It's a kind of loose framework to interpret the adoption life cycle of a technology. And when I look at this, which isn't necessarily about AI, but this can be applied to any kind of technology, I see ChatGPT's launch in 2022 here. Maybe the height of hype is in early 2023. Then everyone starts to get a little bit more realistic and maybe disillusioned. And hopefully now we are on this curve, which Gartner calls the slope of enlightenment. And spoiler alert, that is very much what the report brought back. The majority of businesses do seem to be past the hype and are starting to kind of tackle how to put AI to work. But major barriers still remain. And the main one really for me is how do you integrate AI into a complex and evolving web of operations? So a lot of what is in the report will probably come as no surprise to you. It's fairly intuitive, but I think there's real value in seeing this all laid out, both qualitatively and quantitatively. And it's always useful to test assumptions against real data. So the key takeaways, number one, AI adoption is high and climbing quickly. Our survey found that 28% of businesses are already using AI and another 45 have active, imp active implementation plans underway, meaning that 73% are working with AI or actively planning to. So just 8% are not planning to use AI in the near future. Number two, the real life impact of AI often exceeds expectations. Before adopting AI, 28% of businesses expected it to be transformational, but after implementing it, 51% of adopters reported that it had been transformational for their operations. It's worth considering that the companies reporting these outcomes are the ones who've already invested in AI, so they likely have a greater digital readiness or buy-in, which all contributes to increased success. Number three, depending on the size you are as a business, you'll have different goals. Larger businesses tend to use AI for better insights and decision making because they process a huge amount of data. And smaller businesses tend to have uh, a desire for more efficiency gains. And that is where AI can make a huge difference. And then number four, the biggest barriers to adoption remain knowledge gaps, security fears, and integration challenges. And number five, custom built data integrated AI solutions are generally proving to be the most transformational, especially AI agents. So on those last two points, let's take a little look at the findings around adoption and implementation. So adoption, we kind of break this down in a number of different ways in the report that you should definitely have a look at. I've already mentioned the high level groups of adopters, planners, and rejectors. Another kind of broad stroke way to look at this is in terms of the size of an organization. And while adoption is of course, high across the board, enterprises are moving the fastest with 40% uh, already using AI. However, larger organizations also, while they have clearer AI strategies, they have their own unique challenges like security concerns, integration complexity, and even regulatory hurdles. But smaller companies struggle with different things. They struggle with knowing where to start, what tools to use, uh, things like that. And I'll talk about that a little bit in the integration section. So in terms of industries and functions, unsurprisingly, 
tech forward industries are much more likely to report that they are using AI tools with 67% of tech companies using it already. And again, unsurprisingly, when you look at the functions within any kind of business, IT is leading the pack, but operations and customer service are close behind. And in the qualitative data, you do see this sort of pattern backed up. Certain industries just don't know how AI applies to them. These are often the industries that have the most to benefit because they're labor intensive, time intensive, expensive, and just generally underserved by technology. So what are the blockers? What are the things that tend to hold businesses back? Well, along with things like knowledge gaps or addressing security with IT, they're kind of two big ones really, and that's internal alignment and uh, integration complexity. These seem to be the main ones. Internal tensions can emerge in, of course, multiple different ways. And an intuitive one is really that the older leadership tends to be a little bit more cautious and resistant, where the, whereas the younger employees or newer employees are eager to start using AI and moving ahead. However, you can also have this the other way around, where it's actually the younger teams who are, who are kind of scared that their jobs are going to be replaced, while more senior leadership are sort of implementing systems and trying to move forward. But then, of course, once you've solved all of this and you've got internal alignment and all of that stuff, the real next and final hurdle is integration complexity. So good integration is really key to making AI truly transformational in a business. But it's also really hard to do this without investing in customization. So how are people succeeding? Well, as you might expect, Early adoption starts out with people trying out generative AI platforms that are widely accessible and then using it more and more. Another way that's pretty frictionless is when an organization that's already using a tool, that tool gets AI features added into it so that it's already there within the platform that they're using. But consistently, the businesses that are finding the really transformational impact from AI are those building custom solutions. And like, there really should be no surprise here because each organization or company is totally different. You need to customize all the ways that intelligence works or operates in that organization. It's just like you can't get an expert from one organization and drop them right into another and expect them to be effective right away. There's some kind of onboarding always involved and that's really with AI, that's what customization is. On its own, AI is just a raw force. It's kind of useful, right? An LLM is quite useful, but implementations of that that don't really carefully integrate it with your private data or your unique, your unique workflows or that just have generic interfaces that aren't designed specifically for your users or teams just aren't going to be as effective. So there are many ways to bring in AI to your organization, whether that's custom built with code, features within existing platforms or generative AI. But the one that did come out on top here, which I found interesting, of course, because I work at Glide, was those solutions that were custom built with no or low code platforms. Now, of course, I'm slightly biased. I'm very passionate about this stuff, but I do have a basic working theory, particularly about why this one came up above custom software built with code. Integrating AI, as I've said, is really about integrating intelligence. And within an organization, intelligence needs to adapt quickly. And despite all the incredible advancements in AI-assisted coding right now, traditional coding still requires that you build out not just the core functionality, but also many, many other layers of the software just to get it working. Whereas no-code platforms, while well, they put you on rails a little bit, streamline so much so that the developer and the business are really just spending most of their time on the actual operational solution. And as things change, the software is much, much more agile and easy to update. So businesses are moving beyond the hype and really tackling AI in practical ways, but adoption is still very uneven. Those really getting the results are investing in customization, often with the help of consulting. So if you're unaware or unsure about where to start, just bring in an expert to help you. There are so many people who have tons of experience in building with AI, and you're probably not an expert, but you are an expert in your business. So it makes sense to partner with them. And we've seen this a lot with Glide experts. They are really helping businesses roll out AI successfully and much faster than they could without an outside person's help. And if you're looking to build for businesses, build software for businesses, know that the money and appetite is very much there now. Our survey found that 43% of businesses plan to invest at least 100 grand on AI in 2025. 
So they are not just talking about it anymore. So the TLDR is really that we are on the slope up, but maybe this slope doesn't end. Maybe AI is the first technology that never plateaus on Gartner's curve. Maybe we just keep going.